Hey, thanks for uh, watching my video here. This is the first of three parts. In this episode, I'll be uh, diagnosing the problem that led to a uh, no start hot situation. Truck wouldn't start, so I had to have it towed home. Uh, we're starting with a diagnosis using auto ingenuity on a laptop. All right. We got 12 volts vehicle power, that's where we should be. We currently have 48 volts coming off the FICM, feeding the injectors, that's where that should be. All right, we're not running, so we shouldn't have FICM sync, so seeing that zero there is right. I would imagine it'll show a one, because it's logic. So it'll show a one if we have sync. Okay, 1484, it should be which is pretty, which is right. You have some resistance in the wires. So basically, it should be between 15% and 85%. Now it shouldn't, it should never get to 15 and it should never reach 85. Otherwise we have some sort of issue. All right, and then over here, injector control pressure. Well, we're not building any pressure. So that tells us, well, it tells us that our uh, ICP sensor is not stuck because it's not registering any pressure. So, what we're going to do now is crank this thing and see what happens. Ready? Pick'em stay though. Look at that pressure, how low it is. Alright. We're shutting off. We shut it down and restarted it. Look at the ICP pressure bleeding off. Right here. So let's watch the uh... I can't, I can't watch everything, I just don't have, every, have that ability maybe other people do so what I want to do is watch the IPR and see what it goes to while it's building this pressure that's going to be this PID right here right. it pegged at 84 So this is kind of interesting. Um, when I was just out here working with it, shut it off, let it sit a second, re-crank it, it actually didn't have a very long crank and it was actually restarting. So I replicated the failure I had the other day, which is I shut her down after she was fully warmed up and uh, I, went, I ran into a place, conducted my business, came back out and she wouldn't start. So I actually went in the house and let it sit a little while for about oh, maybe 10 minutes. And I uh, came back out and, and here's our replicated failure. So she's not starting. She's not building oil pressure. IPR is closed. 85%. 240 PSI is about the best we've been able to build so far. So, tomorrow, if the weather permits, I will look for the leak. Alright, well, we watched all the diesel tech run videos we can stand going in. Today, we look for the leak. Alright, here's what we need to get the IPR excuse me, the ICP sensor uh, uh, the ratchet and extension 15 16 socket there's our target right down here hey there it is <laughs> yeah that's the uh, ICP sensor that'll come out and we'll uh, introduce air with the air compressor and a tool that I put together for probably under twenty dollars So. We will get that out of there. 
Okay, there we are. Yeah, the uh, IP or ICP sensor is out, and uh, that's where we'll be, we're going to be taking that port there, and we're going to use that to put air in the system to check for leaks. So uh, here's a tool I made. It starts with an air duster. Okay, and then you got an eighth inch grease hose fitting that fits into that. Now here's the part that's a little hard to get, but you should be able to get it at most auto parts stores. I happen to order mine on eBay. But it is a uh, it was an M12 by one and a half thread. And then it, it adapts to one eighth, eighth inch pipe for pipe thread. There it is, eighth inch pipe thread on the other end, and that fits into the ICP sensor's hole. I also bought an O-ring here to make a good seal because that's how the sensor seals. So the idea was to eliminate leaks so that you could listen for leaks inside the engine. Um, so I went ahead and get the Teflon tape and put that on all of the joints. This shows here. Yeah, I got the tool hooked up now finally. Uh, it's not as difficult as I made it look. So, the tool is connected to the ICP port and we will tighten it up a little bit. This particular fitting uses a 916 wrench. All right, so here's a tool hooked up. Got the, oh, where is it? There it is. Yeah, there's the tool hooked up. Um, got the air compressor connected to that. Next thing you want to do is um, remove the oil cap. I want to get that out of there so you can hear all the agony of watching me take my k and air filter out. Anyway, this is the breather here for the uh, passenger, or the driver's side valve cover. This has got to come out like so. Let's lift it with a pry bar. And when you take that out of there so you can hear if the leak's coming from this side. It can take a few seconds to hear the air go through there from what I've learned. So here's a way you can hold this valve open without having to clamp something on there tight, maybe mess it up. Is just hold it closed and put a put a crescent on there, kind of spin it in. Just finger tight, that's all you need. And we listen. What we're going to want to do now is just command the uh, IPR closed. We'll do that using auto ingenuity. Well, one of the things we can do with this tool here, which is auto ingenuity, is uh, we can uh, close the IPR valve by, just by checking this box. I've already set it at 90%. So I check that box and it'll close that valve. And that will hold the air pressure where we can uh, find the leak. Otherwise, we'd have to uh, apply power to it from the battery directly to close that valve. And this just allows us to do it so much simpler with the click of a mouse. So, here's what we come up with. You can hear it a little bit, like it's bending through the crankcase. You don't hear the hissing over here. Here, like, like air blowing through the engine, which is exactly what it's doing. Whereas over here, you get more of a hissing sound coming out of this one. Right here.
so. You can use just a rubber hose and put it up to your ear to do this as well. It might even see work better if you feed it around and figure out which part it's coming from. But I think I hear the hiss over here. Whereas over there it sounds metallic. Like it's just the air blowing through the engine. Going through the kink case and then bending here. like you would hear in your air compressor if someone was bleeding air out of it. Once I thought I had located the leak I went ahead and started tearing it down, of course beginning by removing the negative battery cables so that we didn't arc anything by accident. Recognizing that I had a leak in the high pressure oil system, I decided to go ahead and order a complete update kit from Sinister Diesel. Since it was going to be a few days before my parts came in, I really didn't want to open the engine up any more than I had to, but curiosity forced me to take that valve cover off and look at the dummy plug on the driver's side where we thought we heard the hiss. Well, I've got, it's been all day tearing it down this far. Turbo off, so I can get in there and get to the pump later. CSTC fitting with a one piece deal eliminates the leaks on it. I got all the wiring and everything else away from the other valve cover. I got this valve cover off and I have identified the problem with Big Red. I already broke this loose on camera, but uh, look at here. This is our leak right here. This o ring's before. And that's where the, the oil was leaking. Wasn't letting it build high oil pressure. It goes down and feeds the injectors. The injectors are underneath this fuel, this oil rail. They call it a fuel rail because it actually fires the fuel injectors. But what it really carries is oil, high pressure oil. As much as 3,000 psi. So it was walking right past that thing. It wasn't even there. Cool. Big Red will ride again.